Enzymes are basically proteins, which are polymers of amino acids assembled inside the cells of living organisms. They are natural catalysts, which means that they are capable of accelerating a given chemical reaction without being transformed. Enzymes carry out billions of reactions every day, and without them, almost all biochemical reactions in our bodies could not happen. While enzymes catalyze many kinds of reactions, normally each enzyme is very specific for a single type of chemical compound or reaction. This high specificity is due to a particular part of the enzyme, called the active site, which has a very definite shape that fits almost exclusively its substrate. For example, we can consider a corkscrew as an enzyme, since it has a distinct function due to its shape and it can significantly lower the amount of energy required in the wine opening process. On the right, you can see the corresponding chemical reaction that could take years to happen without the right catalyst. On the table, we see a couple of bottles and jars with their corresponding lids. They represent the substrates in our reaction. Behind the table, we have our enzyme Lisa, which takes the substrates, bottle and lid, and makes a product. The bottle with the lid screwed on. You see that the enzyme just picks up the bottles and the corresponding lids and makes a product with those. Everything else, it leaves untouched. Like Lisa, most enzymes work very selectively. Now that the enzyme has screwed most of the lids on the bottles, it is getting harder to find its substrates. Therefore, it needs more time to make the product and the reaction slows down. Now we will see how an enzymatic cascade reaction works. It is a series of consecutive enzymatic reactions where each reaction takes place only when the product of the previous reaction is formed. These can also be called enzyme-catalyzed domino reactions. The first reaction, which is catalyzed by ELISA, consists in the combination of the initial substrates, a jar, orange juice and wine. The product of this reaction is then combined with another substrate, pieces of fruit, in a second enzymatic reaction catalyzed by Uri. Once this reaction has taken place, Laura can catalyze the addition of sugar. Then Federica will enable the reaction of the product with ice. Now Lisa takes a jar with sangria and selectively catalyzes the screwing of the caps on the jar. Notice that the lids that she picks have a hole. That is really important for the final reaction, which consists in the addition of a straw, catalyzed by Olga. We successfully accomplished our cascade. Now it's time to enjoy the product. But wait a minute. Do the reactions in our designed cascade always take place without any perturbations? As we can see, not all substrates are present at the beginning of the reaction. Sometimes the enzyme is not completely selective regarding some of the substrates, and that might result in a slower or incomplete reaction, which can lead to a lower production or a product of lower purity. On top of this, some enzymes might catalyze undesired reactions. Another situation that can also happen is enzyme inhibition. Here, the inhibitor is represented by glue, which will stick to the enzyme, altering its active site, and as a result, the enzyme will not be able to catalyze the reaction between the jar and the lid. All in all, enzymes are very useful natural catalysts, and we can apply them in chemical synthesis if we need specific reactions. Some can even do reactions which are not possible through conventional methods. Thanks to them, we avoid the use of scarce precious metals and also product contamination. Reactions are mainly performed in water and the resulting products are extremely pure. Therefore, we investigate enzymes as catalysts to make them more suitable for later applications. Successfully engineering an enzymatic casket can be quite a struggle. But after all our hard work, we have managed to accomplish our task and now it's really time to enjoy our product.